By the end of the 80s, junk bondsmen were busted, yuppie spending sprees began to slow, and the depth of the AIDS tragedy was becoming increasingly clear. It all added up to the end of a decade-long love affair with excess, and hard rockers were beginning to feel like the party was winding down. The era was just based around good times and partying and having a good time and getting drunk and girls, girls, girls. Heavy metal bands prospered in the overindulgence of the 80s, openly flaunting their appetites for drugs and sex. We had the bimbo passes, and there'd be girls under the stage during the show. <laughs> we did some sick shit. It was, it was right out of Hustler magazine. <laughs> drugs were everywhere. Booze everywhere. Women, thank God, everywhere. There were so many girls, and we would go fishing. We'd just walk in with our fishy poles and, and just catch one and pop it in and take it behind the rainbow. 15 minutes later, back on the strip. Everything you read is true and more. Hell yeah, you know? I shag groupies, you know? I mean, it's almost like a healthy thing. Remember being at the cat house? And I asked them if they had a beer bottle cap. And they said, yeah, they got me one. And I, I spit in it and poured some cocaine in it, drew some up and shot up right in front of them. And they flipped out. And I was like, God, what's the, what's the problem? <laughs> As the decade of excess came to a close, years of fast living and drug abuse started to catch up with many hard rockers. And metal's nothing but a good time image was losing its appeal. There's a lot of bands went up the ladder, got famous, famous, famous. And then the 80s kind of peaked out, and everybody's done with the hair. And they started going down the ladder, and the record sales were dropping off, and they broke up. They had become just a bunch of happy metal formula bands out there, smiling and grinning and shaking their asses. There was definitely a disenfranchised audience who wanted that anger, wanted that frustration, and wanted that edge. It's not a TV studio. Turn these lights out. It's a fucking rock concert. Ah! At the dawn of the 90s, America was heading towards a recession, and young people faced an uncertain future. The unpolished sound of groups like Nirvana and Pearl Jam tapped into their cynicism and frustration, and hair metal's audience declined. When we released the record Cherry Pie in the office of Columbia in New York, there was a huge poster of Cherry Pie, you know, and that was a big ego boost. And then when we were going to release the next record, I did the exact same trip to New York to talk with Donnie. And over his secretary's desk was a huge poster again, only this time it was Alice in Chains' Dirt. And I was like, hmm, I think we slipped down the priority ladder here a little bit. It was enough already. The way the image, the overt glam image, uh, came to the fore so significantly 24 hours a day on MTV, it, it, it alienated the hardcore rock audience. So they looked for their jolly somewhere else. You listen to Kurt Cobain and you're like, wow, that's great. And you listen to his songs and you're like, there's no bombs, there's no lasers, and they're coming to the shows and, the, and he's breaking everyone's heart. And you're going, oh, I, I have to go back to square one. When the glam metal, the pop metal bands faded away, the only bands that were, were left were the hardcore bands. Metallica, them and Megadeth, the only people who survived because they weren't going with any trend and they weren't allowing themselves to be compromised by the record companies, so their fans stood by them. Others made attempts to appeal to the grunge audience, but by the early 90s, most of the metal bands that ruled the charts in the 80s were extinct. When grunge became cool, it wasn't cool to be in any of the, the 80s bands. But if you weren't wearing flannel or had a goatee, I mean, you were not cool. I mean, you were, you were just, you should be shot on sight. It hurt. Heavy metal had a wild ride in the 80s. From cult status to pop favorites, from speed metal to hair metal to thrash, metal bands took full advantage of a nation that seemed perpetually ready to party. 80s metal just means pure entertainment, just having a lot of fun either playing it or watching it. Mama, 
The most important thing you can learn from 80s metal is it doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be complaining all the time. It can be a celebration. It was fun. I mean, I like R.E.M., but I mean, I don't think I would enjoy being a member of R.E.M. I mean, I would love to have that integrity. I would love to have that critical acclaim. But I don't think they're having, like, big orgies and doing all kinds of drugs and doing blow-off girl stuff and stuff. A lot of great bands and great music came out of that era. I mean, we were truly living out our fantasy, and we brought that onto the stage, onto the scene, into the shows. We were young, we were partying, and it was, it was awesome. 80s metal bands made music that was loud and fun, and we should be forever grateful. Today, anything goes in rock and roll. The wilder, the better. We owe this legacy to those bands. In the next hour, we will look at the decade in new wave and alternative rock. I'm Shannon Doherty, and I'll see you then.